Hello learners, this is Sean from the Kindercare Education Team with you again. For today's activity, we're going to go back into the world of chemistry to do an experiment we call exploding fruit. There's going to be a few supplies that you're going to want to make, and I'm going to walk you through the setup portion and then have a brief pause for you to do the experience yourself first before coming back to witness me doing the experience and talking about what the signs mean. So the supplies you're going to need first are going to be a tablespoon of liquid dish soap. You're going to want to have some white distilled vinegar, uh, not necessarily any particular amount, typically about a tablespoon, quarter of a cup, somewhere in there, not a lot really. You're going to want to have a cup of baking soda. If possible, it's good to have some food coloring. And then you're going to want to have four teaspoons of water. So it's just four teaspoons of water. For the experience, I recommend working with your child to help them experience measuring and putting together the materials uh, based off the instructions because it really allows them an opportunity to practice the physical dexterity of measuring, the idea of controlling amounts of substances. This is gonna help whenever they go into cooking or in chemistry classes as they get older, really learning the value of a measurement as opposed to just pouring sums in there. You're gonna to wanna to have one cup, one teaspoon and one tablespoon, and then you'll wanna have some type of mixing utensils. Another option is that you could also have goggles if you have access to those at home. None of these liquids are gonna be dangerous, but it's just good practice with science. If you have access to goggles, wear them, but if you're doing the experience at home, it's understandable if you don't. The last things you'll need is you're gonna to need to have a couple storage containers. So I have one mixing bowl, just a clear bowl that I can use to mix my uh, liquids. And then I have one casserole serving dish. All this is gonna be used for is to house the experience because the experience will get a little messy. You also might, especially if you're doing this over carpet, wanna have a tablecloth or something out because there is a chance that you're gonna have a little bit of a mess, a little bit of a spill. There will be some staining on your hands if you're using the food coloring. Uh, so if that is something that you want to prevent, you can use gloves. I'm personally just going to go wild and let them stain. And because I'm using food coloring, they'll wash off after a little bit of soap and water, which right now is not a bad thing to make sure I'm doing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to combine our materials and mix those to make the fruit that we're going to do our experience with. So we're going to take a cup of baking soda. And it's a really good opportunity during this experience to discuss the value of following uh, recipes and instructions. If a cake asks for a fourth of a cup of salt and you add three cups of salt, what's that going to do to the taste of the cake? So it's really good just to have those discussions about values and numbers while you're doing the experience. We're going to dump that into our mixing container. That is going to be the bulk of our mixture. Then we're going to take a tablespoon of liquid dish soap. So we have a tablespoon of liquid dish soap that we're mixing in. And then we have our four teaspoons of water. Now while we've added that, we want to go and start having the discussion with our children. What all did we add into this mixture? We added solids, liquids, gases. They'll probably understand early on that your dish soap and your water are going to be liquids. But not all children will understand that your baking soda as a powder is actually a solid. So as we mix these in, have them think about when they're mixing, what's going to be the outcome of the mixture? Is it likely to be a solid or a liquid? And you're going to have them start mixing up the three ingredients. As it begins to form kind of less of a powder and you start to see more of a solid uh, gelatin slime kind, type of material, in the mixture, they can transition into using their hands for the mixture. But to start, it's good to use a spoon. All right, so my mixture here is beginning to get pretty solid. Don't really see any pockets of liquid in there anymore, but I wanna make sure it's pretty well mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my fingers to do it. And I'm gonna use my red food coloring because they're gonna to wanna to decide what type of fruit do they wanna recreate. And so since I want to make an apple, I'm going to use a little bit of this red. All right. 
And then we're gonna mix that red in. Again, if you wanna use gloves to make sure you don't stay in your hands, that's completely fine. You wanna make sure you have a tablecloth if you're near carpet or anything so you don't stain that too badly. Um, or maybe an apron to make sure you don't mess up your shirt. I now have, um, obviously I chose not to use gloves. Um, science for me is always fun whenever it's a bit of a mess. I now have a mostly red mixture because there was a lot of baking soda, my red drained a little bit, but I don't want to use too much of my food coloring. Because I want to go a little extra, I got myself a little bit of green food coloring to go with it. And I'm going to now try to form this into the shape of a fruit. Uh, so it can be anything I want. It's really just my chance to recreate something. So if I have mostly a red ball and then some green that I'm going to put extra on top of it, what do you think I might be making? I'm gonna be making myself an apple. So what we have here is I've now made my mixture of baking soda, water, and dish soap into a fruit. And I'm going to take my distilled white vinegar and I'm gonna add it in small amounts at a time to my mixture fruit and see what happens in the reaction. See if anything changes, if there's anything we notice. Before I do that with you on the video, try it yourself adding small amounts at a time and keep adding to the reaction until the entire fruit is either gone or changed in some way, shape, or form. And then come back to the video and we'll discuss what happened. So now that we're back, I'm going to do this activity with you. And I'm going to show you what happens as we add this vinegar to our mixture fruit. If you have done or haven't done it before, what happened? And why do you think it happened? Or what do you think will happen if you haven't had a chance to do this activity yet? And we're going to discuss what's happening as it's going on and what that means from a science level. So first we're going to add our little bit of vinegar. So if you notice, we're getting bubbles and if you listen real close when you do the activity, you'll hear some fizzing and bubbling happening. Traditionally when you see bubbles and fizzing or there's changes of color and odor, that typically means you have what's called a chemical reaction. And that is where you take one substance and you combine it with another to make a third brand new substance. So if I combine peanut butter and jelly, I'm not making a new substance, I'm just making a sandwich. But when I combine the baking soda and the vinegar and it gets this bubbled reaction, the chemicals are combining to give me some new substance out of that creation, a new compound. So whenever we see that bubbling and fizzing, it's the vinegar and the baking soda combining to give us that new interaction. If you start to get where you're just having the same interaction on top, you can use your fingers because it's not gonna hurt you or anything. And you can push in and give yourself a little bowl to create that reaction in. And you can keep adding the vinegar. And as long as there's unreacted baking soda, you're gonna keep getting a new reaction every time you add more vinegar. And as you keep adding to it and you keep breaking apart your fruit, it's going to keep having this reaction until all of the baking soda has been introduced to vinegar. As long as there's baking soda that hasn't made physical contact with vinegar, it's going to keep bubbling and fizzing. As always, thank you for coming and being part of this activity with me today. Make sure you're checking our pages every week as we post new activities and new experiences you can do at home. And if you do this experience, our exploding fruit or any other activities that we post, Make sure you're posting pictures and videos and stories about which ones you like the most in the comments below. And this way we can see all the learning still happening at home. I hope you have a great day.